Hi students and family members, this is Mr. Panza teaching you how to divide. Today we're going to focus on how we actually set up smaller division problems. And this is an important lesson because it's going to help us with the foundational work that we need which we'll eventually use during our longer division process. So without further delay, let's take a look at small and short division problems that will help us in the future. In a previous video, we talked about a couple of definitions. Dividend, which is the number or the total that is getting separated. The divisor, which is the number that is separating the larger number. A quotient, which is not labeled here, which would be the answer to a division problem. Remainder is not in this example, and we'll get to that a little bit later. But a couple of things that you may not be aware of that I will have you create every single time when we start division problems are these tally boxes and answer boxes. Because this tally box is going to be the foundation for when you're not looking at 24 divided by 6, but when you get a larger number, for example, 2,400. 472 divided by 6. We're not really concerned with the fact that you set up these tally boxes for a smaller division problem, which is what we're going to practice next. We want you to set up tally boxes now so that you get into the habit of creating them so that when you get the larger numbers, you have a strategy, you have an attack plan to help you divide using long division. So, as I mentioned, without further delay, let's take a look at some smaller problems and get into the habit of setting up these tally boxes to help us with our answer. A tally box is just going to tell me how many times I skip counted by the divisor. The divisor, by the way, is that smaller number, and you can always determine that because divisor is spelled with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters, and dividend, which is the larger number is spelled with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 letters. So the larger word is the larger number. 24 is the dividend and 6 is the divisor, which means in my example, I will be creating tally marks every time I skip count by 6 until I get up to the number 24. That's because I'm counting by sixes to see how many times that six can go into 24 without going over. I always let the students know that I don't want to go over because that's like promising money that you don't have. If you go over the number 24, that's like promising somebody that you have 25 or $30 when really all you have is $24. So I start out with those $24 and I can't go over it. I want to separate that $24 evenly into equal groups by $6 a piece. So that's why I'm skip counting. And then my answer will be how many groups of six that I subtracted out of 24. Some people find it hard to believe that division is nothing more than repeated subtraction. But it is, because if I continually took away 6 from this 24, I'm eventually going to get to 0. And however many times I took away the 6, that's how many groups of $6 I would have in my example. Now that's a difficult concept for students to understand, which is why typically we teach division this way. How many times can 6 go into 24? Well, let's skip count by 6 until we get to 24. This again is how your skip counting songs help you out. 6, 12, 18, 24 stop. And I'm going to write down 24 in my answer box. And I'm also going to write down 24 in my dividend box. Now you may be wondering, what's my quotient? Maybe I forgot because I was too busy writing 24 down. Don't panic. Go back to your tally box and see. My quotient is how many times I skip counted or how many groups I had to get to 24. And in this example, you can see that I have 1, 2, 3, and 4 different groups of 6. That means 4 is my quotient, 24 is what I got when I multiplied 6 by 4, and now I subtract to see if there is anything left over. And there's not. So if there's nothing left over, I'm good to go. Now many of you looked at 24 divided by 6 and could answer that question like that. But I want you to always set up the tally box because when we get into the long division problems, you will have a strategy and an attack plan. Let's take a look at a couple more examples. Here's my tally box, and now I have a dividend 40 
divided by 8. So, counting by 8s, how close can I get to 40 without going over? If I start out with $40 and I want to evenly separate that money into equal groups of 8, how many groups of 8 can I subtract out of those $40? Skip count by 8. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48. Hang on. I don't want to promise $48 if I don't have $48. So let me take that last tally mark away and keep in mind that when I had five tally marks, I got to the number 40. I write that 40 in the box. I write it underneath the dividend, and I count my tallies, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and place that as my quotient because there were five groups of $8 in each group that got me to 40. How do I see if there's any left over? I subtract 40 minus 40 is zero. There's nothing left over. Another example. If I start out with $49 and want to evenly separate that money into seven equal groups, then I need to skip count by seven until I get to 49. 7, 14, 20, 128, 35, 42, 49. Then I stop. I write down the answer I got to into two spots underneath the dividend, and I count the tally marks to see what my quotient is. How many groups of $7 do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Another example, 27 divided by 3. Skip counting by 3. How close can I get to 27 without going over? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27. Stop. Put 27 in my answer box, place 27 in my dividend, count that I have a bundle of 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 total tally marks, which means I have 9 groups of 3. And in this case, that's my quotient because when I subtract, I get 0. And now we're going to get into when the money or candy doesn't divide up evenly or perfectly. I just wanted you to get a grasp and understanding of making sure that when you have these division facts, you still use a tally box, you still place your quotient in the correct answer, and you still subtract based on the steps we processed. To find out more about this question right here and this question here, check out the next video as we dive a little bit deeper into longer division. Thanks for stopping by.